that same high to the last call I could lie and say that I don't miss you at all I'm sorry that I couldn't be strong You're gonna miss me, miss me Every night red eyes till I can't crawl I could lie and say that I don't miss you at all I'm sorry that I couldn't be strong You're gonna miss me when I'm gone <laughs> Happy Tuesday, everybody. And you know what Tuesday brings. Tuesday is bringing some Rainbow Six Siege, and I am so excited for it. I'm ready for it. It is one of my favorite nights of the week, especially because I am joined by what a, such a phenomenal co-host. A, a what's, what's the adjective for today? A dazzling <laughs> co-host. The dazzling toner. How you doing, toner? I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> to be honest, I pulled an all-nighter, so if I'm not sounding excited, that, that's why. I'm, I'm running on 30 hours, no sleep, but I'm so uh, excited. Not, that is not good. <laughs> hey, well, it's going to be it's gonna be so much fun. I had a sales report due. Yeah, it, it is midterms. It is midterms here, mm -hmm. so uh, there is no shame in that. But I got to say, I am excited for Rainbow Six Suits. I'm trying to button my... Uh, my there, we, there we go. Uh, but I'm your host, The Bearded Man. Uh, as always, and we have a great, great game tonight. Now it is your Carthage Firebirds versus the Western Colorado University Mountaineers. And we got to say, we are heading into the final weeks. We have, I believe, one more week before the postseason, before playoffs. And it looks like the Firebirds were currently, they were at number, they were number two in the division. And then unfortunately, after the very, very close loss last week, being knocked down to number three, but they're not out. They have locked in their playoff spot, so they are they are ex they are happy for that. They're just working for that at this point. And looking against our opponents, they have not locked in the playoffs so far. So uh, Western Colorado going three and four so far, and Firebirds going five into a decent amount of difference. Now the Firebirds, to be more specific, Firebirds are twelve and five on their map differential. And then 112 to 77 on the round differential. So we're in Do the you positive. You that on there. the top of your head all the time. No, it's like, on the sheet it? right here that I'm reading. Oh, because, I didn't even you know, notice that. I'm, I wish I was that good. Uh, but <laughs> you know, bringing it be, and, and I think because the opponents last week, you know, we we were talking about how like I believe they were like number five in the division. Um, but when it what it comes down to is looking at their round differential mm -hmm. because we found that they were it was 78 to 78 like even for our opponents last week. Uh, which, when you think about that, that means that the time that they've lost means they've lost by like a round or two. Like they were that close to a loss, you know, or to winning it. Um, and looking at our game last week, it showed. I mean, we yeah. we lost, but by by just a, a hair, basically. Um, but also we were on we were playing on Monday of last week, so like there could have <laughs> been some uh, other uh, situations and factors playing to that loss. But the Firebirds have been working. All week, trying to you know recover and learn what they did wrong, correct those mistakes, uh, and I'm I'm very confident we're going to see some great plays tonight. Now, uh, the Mountaineers, their map differential, like I said, they were three and four for this season, but their map differential six to eight, so they are negative two on the map differential, and their round differential fifty seven to seventy eight. That's a decent, uh, not a, a, a very um, What's the word? A, a larger difference, I should say, than what we, you know, we've seen in the past. The Firebirds at plus thirty-five for that round differential is the second best in the division. The number one team, though, um, which I believe is, uh, I'm not quite sure, SHSU. Um, they're number one right now. They are undefeated. They've lost twenty-eight rounds and have won like seventy-eight. Oh, jeez. So. They have not lost a single map. They are. <laughs> they're a very good team, and I don't think the Firebirds are really. Um, I'm hoping because I believe they're our opponents next week, and I'm I'm hoping we come back. But that is going to be the comeback of a se of the century, basically. <laughs> that is going to be a very difficult uh, hurdle. But the Firebirds have been able to to accomplish some amazing feats like that. So, what are mm -hmm. you expecting from the Firebirds tonight? Tonight, 
hopefully that we've seen like a bunch of improvement going in from last week and then hopefully going to see a win. I'm uh, hoping. Because uh, <laughs> Fibers do not like to lose, they but they not. just come back stronger and stronger. So I think we're going to see a lot of new uh, new techniques and new, uh, uh, new ways of how to push these sides and how to defend these sides. So I'm very interested to see what they've been working on all week, and I just can't wait to get into it. Oh, yeah, I am super excited. Especially now that they have a little, I'm hoping to see a little bit more Brava from them. Yeah, because Brava is has been in the hero or the operator pool um, for about. This is week number two, I think, in the operator pool. I be, because uh, we, believe so. We they, they are it's Brava is relatively new, but not super new to the point where there's no strategies. I think we might see a strategy or two of using Brava, especially that gadget. That utility is so important. Mm -hmm. Being able to basically, as an attacker, hack. A defensive gadget especially against the captain like that's just like a free win almost there uh but you know the looks like number map number one of tonight is going to be on chalet if hybrids are going to start attacking there what are you expecting from that attack I say, that, like we see many times that a Firebirds, their strengths uh, on attack is really just pushing from multiple sides. Like mm. we see the most wins coming from that. Hopefully they're going to be doing that. But Chalet is also one of the most played maps like uh, in, oh, yeah. in Rainbow oh, Six Siege. Yeah. So everyone kind of knows the strategy of how to push. So it's just how to do it uniquely, quickly, and efficiently, I'd say. So mm -hmm. hopefully we'll see that tonight. Yeah, and that has been an issue we've seen from the Firebirds. I think their biggest issue we've seen all season is just kind of slow in some yeah. attacks. Um, Chalet, we've had, I believe, more successes than failures on Chalet, and it's a map the Firebirds know and love, and I think their strategies are very much set. But also, I know that they've always kind of adapted. You know, they've always brought new strategies to the table, keeping things interesting. So I'm pretty excited to see that. Now, map two of tonight is going to be Theme Park, and I think the Firebirds, <laughs> I personally have been starting to really like Theme Park, and the Firebirds have seemed to as well. I remember uh, the first time we played on Theme Park, the Firebirds were, that was like last second, like they didn't really have any strategies, except maybe an hour before the match started. So they had an hour basically to uh, really take a look at, you know, some new strategies. And... They came back. They won that one, I remember. And then, you know, ending it off on Villa, if we do end up going to a Game 3, I'm hoping I'm hoping we don't see a Game 3. Yeah, I mean, it, it'd be nice seeing, uh, seeing two uh, two maps only, but I, I definitely want to see as much siege, siege as I can, so I wouldn't oh, mind yeah. it. <laughs> and obviously, you, the viewers at home, want to see more of us. <laughs> I'd like to think that, uh, and I know that that's probably not the case, um, but probably is the case. You know, I know. Think I think it's hit or miss. I know we have a few fans out there, <laughs> uh, but you know, I think the Mountaineers. I'm 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 curious now. The thing that is notable about the Firebirds is the Fire Firebirds. Foyer, I was about to say Foyer. Firebirds. The Firebirds the are very careful with making sure that there's no sort of intel out on the field. You know. Um, outside of the game, they make sure all of our uploads are kind of archived secretly, so that we're able to rewatch them. But like, they're not online, so that's I think a biggest a, a big strength of ours. I'm not quite sure about the Mountaineers, but I, you know, I'm not. I don't think I don't know if the Firebirds had any any uh, footage to watch of the Mountaineers. But um, looking back at last week, what do you think the biggest like issue was with the Firebirds? I mean, there was a lot of things. It was just like. Eh. The main thing is just, uh, I wouldn't say a problem for the Firebirds side, because there, there were some small mistakes. Mm -hmm. um, I think really is that uh, the the other team just had r one really extremely good player. It's just tough yeah. to track him Unstoppable down. Unstoppable was uh, living up to that name. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> I'm I'm hoping we're going to see a little bit different. Uh, you know, I, I think it might be a slightly different situation because, you know, Unstoppable was a phenomenal player, but, the re you know, it, it was definitely a situation where, like, they weren't able to do everything, you know, yeah. because it was the Firebirds were able to, to stop Unstoppable many times. Um, but that was last week, and this is this week. And before we get ready for map number one, let's meet the players.
Welcome back, everybody. Uh, and the players are just about ready to head into map one, which is, once again, Chalet. Firebirds are going to be starting the attack. Now, what operators do you think are essential for this attack? Get to have hard breach. Mm -hmm. Like, even going for uh, going basement, going second floor, is that always nice having hard breach. And th that's pretty much given on on any single map. Yeah. <laughs> for, th for this, personally, um, you go in basement, I I'd bring a collie with you. It's just going to be really nice <laughs> if you open that if you open that garage. You know, it, it just having a sniper going long range, really nice. Oh, yeah. Same with Osa, oh, yeah. too, having that shield to, to help out the collie. I think, personally, um, collie is great, but honestly, I personally like glass more a mm -hmm. little bit a little bit more um you know with that that thermal sight allowing to kind of see onto sight a little bit more especially if you throw some smoke grenades um yeah you do i think with kali you do have the strength of that lance that is able to mm -hmm. destroy any sort of gadgets behind that wall allowing you to open it up um but in the case that maybe the wall isn't as heavily fortified or you have you know maybe a thatcher um i think glass might be the choice there um but you know attacks and a uh, Defense bands. Let's focus on that as the teams get ready for the attack. What bands are you, are, are we you expecting? You know, I honestly, I'd say with this Doka B, I'd say I'm gonna see a Thatcher Jackal. Honestly, Thatcher Jackal. I don't think a Doka B. I think this site because this map is so yeah. big vertically. The audio is not going to be as much of a threat almost. Um, uh, more in the case of just like with Jackal, I don't find it to be. Completely safe to mm -hmm. use Jackal on this map. I'd say more of on the up. Uh, uh, if you're looking at more on the east portion of the side, um, I'd say over by kitchen and all that, you have mm -hmm. a little bit more cover. But at, yeah. the, at the same time, there, I, we, we oh, do see we the go. Thatcher <laughs> ban that nobody is surprised about in the slightest. <laughs> um, but I think this next one is really going to set the tone. I think I say Jackal, you're going to go with the. Uh, with the Doki. Yeah. Now it, it's very hit or miss, and I think it comes yep. down to just kind of. It, it's we. I love to compare the two because Jackal has the visual component, whereas Dokubi has the audio component. Mm -hmm. Now, audio and visual. Visual relies on the footprints, whereas audio doesn't. You can call everybody. Now, Kaid is the band. I think it's going to be Amira. Yeah, most likely. <laughs> I, I, you know, I, we used to call Valkyrie all the time, but Mira has just. <laughs> yeah, oh my you don't want to deal with it. Like it, I, we've. I mean, in our practice, in our games, are on our own. Mira. Oh. oh. Okay. <laughs> All right. I was I was knocking on Valkyrie, but I mean Valkyrie is a phenomenal operator oh, on the yeah. site. Um, I got to be honest though, I'm shocked because Mira is a very powerful person. So I'm hoping that's what we're gonna see. But you know, I think the situation with that is because the Mountaineers are defending first, they want that Mira. Yeah, I would uh, say so. I mean, uh, it's gonna be a little bit tough with the Firebirds if they're good at pushing from multiple angles. The the Mira can only work one way mm -hmm. it's it's it, it's a one-way mirror for her <laughs> but at, at the same time you know nothing's watching her back so mm -hmm. you know you just uh, you just the sandwich them in it'll be good bomb. to go definitely now it looks like the mountaineers once again on defense for the starting um and i gotta be honest their composition looks pretty weird i'm seeing a solis a thorn um we I, I, the screen's a little bit gone right now. It'll be very shortly. It'll be back. But like Solis, you know that I think an operator on this site, on this map, everywhere, it's just phenomenal. I think oh, yeah. Solis in general is becoming such a strong operator. But here we go. We do have for the Mountaineers their defensive on second floor. Gonna be running Jaeger, Solis, Mute, Echo, and Thorn. That is, to 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 say the least, a very interesting composition. One I don't think I could ever really design. I mean, you got. The anti, you got Jaeger who has the anti throwables, which is almost essential in competitive siege. But you got Echo, Thorn, and Solis. I mean, Solis, like I was saying, is so good, but like Echo and Thorn are two combos, are two people, you know. What do you think of that? Well, for Echo alone, I mean, he needs to stand still and be on his phone to use his drones. Mm -hmm. And with this. I just don't see it working the best on second floor, but I, I, I could be wrong. You know, Echo is an extremely powerful operator. And Thorn, I like for just, I'd say over like the window areas and then uh, walking in the doors. I think it's mm -hmm. a pretty good trap operator. Um, I would have liked to see a Frost and a Thorn together. Mm -hmm. Just go two and two. But I am kind of liking this. It's It looks extremely deadly. Yeah, now looking at the Firebirds lineup on attack, I think it's just a very, I wouldn't say cookie cutter, but like it's just the solid composition we've seen 
time and time again. Uh, we got Quizby on Osa, Teshi on that Gridlock, uh, Ice Helix on that uh, Zofia, Xerxes on Iana, and Wialku on that Ace. What an interesting... I mean, I think it's solid. And I gotta be honest, we're seeing Wialku uh, play... Uh, ooh! Ooh, Xerxes taking out Livid from WCU. A great choice. But as I was... <laughs> and I see this getting a pick. I can't even finish my sentence. I gotta say that Wialku filling in for Tuan. I don't know how I feel about that. I mean, we've seen some... some the best... W I can't even describe just how beautiful some of these plays have been from Tuan. Um, but, you know, that that very well could be strategic. Mm -hmm. um, I think that might be saving Tuan maybe for map, map number two. I'm not quite sure. Um, but, you know, Ice Helix on that Zofia. We've seen Zofia is a very powerful operator, especially as we could see going to probably try breach into this um, piano room, which we do see. We see Boo? I think that's what it, Bo, Bo Zero, Boo? Uh, I'll just say Boo, because that's kind of <laughs> funny. Uh, Boo is going to be on the piano, which is the standard hold. Unfortunately, Xerxes taken out by Claude671. But as I was saying, Ooh. we're seeing Boo on the piano, but that's not going to be a threat to Ice Helix, who's just going to peek and lay down a ton of fire, taking out Boo and allowing and dropping the Mountaineers to two more players. Now, Cam, Louie, and... Claude 671 are the remaining players for the Mountaineers, but are in a weird predicament. Now, Claude was able to take out Quisby, but Wialku was going to get the refrag there. It is now just a 3v1 in favor of the Firebirds, and a shotgun and an M7 SMG against uh, a lot of really good guns. You know, that's going to be interesting, but we will see how this is going to go because it looks like the Firebirds not having much time on the clock. So somebody's going to have to push, but we see Wialku is going to be planting, which is going to be very beneficial for the Firebirds. Um, but all, we got to hope that Wialku is able to plant it, and there we go. The C4 was not angled to get the kill. So right now, the Firebirds are on defense, Ooh. but that's not going to stop them because Wialku, just with that long shot, going to be making sure to take out the remaining Mountaineer. Securing round one for the Firebirds. What? What, 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 tell me about that round. What did you think? Tactical and precise. You mm -hmm. know, they went in with a game plan, executed it very quickly and very flawlessly. Like I, I have really no notes because that was just a really, really solid play. Uh, yeah, I think it was a little bit slower. You know, but still, we were able to kind of pace out some of these kills that I think it yeah, worked out. But it was slower. But in in the regards, like you saw that there's a lot more. A lot more stuff being done rather than just like it, it completely clearing out and all that, and then almost no kills or no resources being like, being tamed from that. Is that there was actually there's some kills on the board and it was effective, mm -hmm. and then they took that space and the and the firebirds just closed the gap. Definitely. So it, it it like I think the time was well spent and it well worth it. Yeah, I agree. I think you know like like I've said in the past too you know the firebirds losing one or two people that's not a bad thing mm -hmm. um, it's like chess you know you can't play a chess game and win without really you know it's very yeah. difficult <laughs> I should say to uh, win a chess game without losing any sort of pieces and at this point you know we've seen the firebirds you know use these sa almost sacrifices for the intel and I think it really did show I mean it looks like the firebirds kind of pinpointed where everybody was at every point um, and that intel is so important for this game but on to round two, it looks like uh, the Mountaineers are going to be holding that second floor once again, uh, running that Jaeger, Solis, Mute, Ella, and Bandit. Slightly different, swapping Ella, or swapping Thorn and Echo for the Ella and Bandit, which honestly is the choice to make. Ella and Bandit are far better than an Echo and a Thorn, I think, in this situation. A lot more defensive utility as opposed to just kind of offensive you know and we can see the bandit is going to be trying to do a little bit of a bandit trick on the side wall which you know i think since the firebirds are running ace it's going to work out for them mm -hmm. because ace is allowed is guaranteed at least one of the charges to go off when there's a bandit trick you know the timing just works out so you're going to get at least one explosion um which is why Ace is basically the go-to for so many players because you just, you, there's not really, if there's electricity, yeah, it's going to counter it. But if there's no electricity, you're just basically going to have a great time. Or I should say wall <laughs> denial, you know, because you have the mute, jam the mute jammers as well, which are going to be a threat, you know, but it all depends on where Cam Louie placed it for the mm -hmm. Mountaineers. You know, they could be placing it away from walls because you do have the bandit. But you never know. Now we do see Xerxes is going to be trying to push into library. The Elo uh, mine, the Grismont mine is going to go off, kind of uh, obscuring Xerxes' vision and sound. A few of the senses there. Um, but 
nobody was able to put nobody pushed in to try and take Xerxes out when he was a little bit vulnerable there. So, uh, that, you know, Xerxes was able to kind of just take the cover and, and hope and hope nobody's going to push in, and it worked. So now the Firebird's gaining a lot more ground. Now the time is just over a minute there, 70 seconds on the clock. GC minimum taking a little bit of damage there. Looked like Ice Helix Watt was trying to watch that library angle, but Ice Helix was just going to let uh, let loose onto that barricade and take out, or not take out, but deal a lot of damage, you know? Mm -hmm. Xerxes finally clearing out that mezzanine, trying to make sure you don't, trying to little, you know, a little bit of a spotting uh, recon area onto that bottom of the fireplace area, making sure, hey, you know, there's no roamers, we're safe, <laughs> we're good. Yeah, but Firebird's really need to push this a little yeah. bit quicker. There's only 35 seconds remaining. Very true. Now, Ice Silix did try and do a peek, but nobody was there. Now we do see somebody was technically there, but just kind of a little bit ways out. Ooh. Now, Ice Silix taking out that Ella. It's going to be really good because now there's one less person the Firebirds have to go against. And those Ella mines allow them to kind of push forward without many issues. Now, Solis is down for the Firebirds. Ice Silix down as well. Uh, and the Firebirds are not looking so hot. The, the timer is basically gone. And we do see the Mountaineers just really not having any issues. And taking out the remaining two players, Cam Louie, with a double kill. What went wrong there? It's just, I think it just played a really, really tough defensive strategy. I think the Firebirds were just trying to trying to push something for a little bit too long instead of rotating around, trying to be flexible. Because mm -hmm. I don't think any of us went up uh, Solarium stairs or anything, tried mm -hmm. pushing from that side. It looked like we were all trying to go kind of that mezzanine area, yeah. that one direction. Um, not the boy band, unfortunately. But, <laughs> uh, you know, we've said it in previous weeks where if you're pushing from the same direction, all of the defenders are just going to turn, you yeah. know? Because at that point, I can look in one direction and just not the boy band and see... <laughs> That side of the doorway and that side of the doorway. I'm going to point towards the camera. That side of the doorway and that side of the doorway. Not really having a turn, you know? Just kind of like a... You know? <laughs> um, but I like that little sound effect. <laughs> <laughs> That's the sound that Ice Helix makes every time he, every time he turns. <laughs> um, but, you know, if you have that solarium, they, they suddenly you got a lot more yeah. uh, area to defend and you kind of maybe have to turn around just a little bit, do a little bit of a wrap around, you know? Uh, and you just gotta, you gotta do that sometimes. Yeah, you, know, you gotta it, push it, up from different directions. Because it's just closing in, it's closing in all that pressure and exactly. it, it, into one side. Because you push it from, uh, from one area, defenders are gonna be watching it. Oh yeah. And you push it from both areas. Now defenders need to watch both the front and the back. You push through another one. It's just like, it could be anywhere from mm -hmm. 360. Who's gonna be pushing first? Exactly. So and then you just start, you start, you know, putting some pressure on. Yeah, now it does look like the Mountaineers still on defense on round number three. Going to be going that basement run. Seeing a zombie, bandit, mute, Mira, and Thorn. There is the Mira that I was so wishing we saw. Um, wishing the Firebirds, you know, would play it, you know, and I'm sure they will play it. But, like, you know, I, 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 I'm I disappointed because that's that's a great choice. And I want the Firebirds to win because I am biased. But that's a great, that's the smart play, you know, and, and deep down. Uh, I would be shocked if they didn't run it ever, especially on Basement. It's just so essential. Now, Ooh. we do see the Firebirds on Thermite, Habana, Fuse, Iana, and Ying. Just full destruction, full chaos, and Iana. <laughs> for that intel. You got Iana for the intel. Uh, oh, and not, the frag grenades, you too. Do have, yeah, you have the frag grenades. You, know, you can't forget about that. I got to say, though, Azami as well is just so essential on this site. Oh, yeah. Um, it's it just had those bulletproof walls that you could basically deploy anywhere. It's just great, you know. But the Mia Jammer is going to cause some issues for the Firebirds. Uh, but here's the thing that I called a couple weeks ago. We didn't really see it. I hope F Ice Helix playing that fuse. I hope we see a certain strategy that I learned where you deploy them behind the fireplace on the mezzanine because you have that vertical distance that the explosions are going to open up the entire floor and some of them are going to fall underneath. Now, Teshi did open up that hatch, um, was able to destroy the bandit battery, did take a little bit of damage to what looked like some C4 there from the bandit, um, but they were able to kind of, you know, Teshi was able to back up enough to survive. Now. Quizby opening up that wall into uh, Wine Cellar is going to be great. And there goes the Mira for the Mountaineers. Xerxes able to get that pick. 
So the Firebirds, oh, now we do, it does look like they know someone's around, someone's roaming around. Unfortunately, Claude taking out Quisby. Um, it is 4v4 and 40 seconds on the clock. The Firebirds need to, need to n n hustle up slightly. We all could, taking out Livid, that is going to allow them to get a few picks. But Ooh. Claude was able to push up to the one place nobody expected. And we can see he's holding the diffuser, is protecting it. Which is the smart play, because that is the, the objective at this point for the Firebirds. And if they're not able to take it, if they're not able to kind of get a, a, any sort of pick, but there you go, there's the pick to, that they needed. 15 seconds left on the clock, so they need to be pushing in. Now Techie trying to get a peak kill, unfortunately not able to get any sort of success. Ice Helix really needing to get a kill here, and able to get one pick, but now going to be having to plant. And we're going to see that Boo is probably going to push and get the kill. Not quite. The Firebird wasn't oh. able to get a deep. And there we go. Unfortunately, Boo was able to get the peak kill. It, that, that just was due to the time there. Yeah, I know. It, you know, they spent so much time trying to get that wall open because the Firebirds had to go upstairs, break the hatch, and try and get the, the Mute Jammers out. And I, I say just bring a Kali, you know. E even though it's going to be close quarters and all that, just for that Lance, you yeah. basically get a secured, like, a, a wall denial. Yeah. Well, you or know, a wild, okay. wall Wall destruction. Destruction. Anti-wall denial. Anti- <laughs> There's no official <laughs> terms for this stuff. Are we A just boom boom. We are just making it up on the spot in all honesty. <laughs> but I got to be honest. Yeah, I mean, Kali is pretty good close quarters. I mean, you have um, the SMG secondary, oh, yeah. you know, which allows you to be a little bit more close quarters while also having that long range and that lance on the primary. Now, Firebirds, on this attack, you know, it, I think another issue with that last round was might might have been communication. Mm -hmm. I think Quisby was trying to push into Wine Cellar with the you know thought that hey, Teshi was just up in that up in that hatch, probably watching down, watching my back. Now we didn't see the kill from Quisby, so that you know that might have been the situation, just kind of a long distance kill. I'm not quite sure, but you got to be watching out for that communication as well yeah. because you need to be protecting each other. You need to be working as a team. If my back is turned, and this is something we, I experienced <laughs> earlier today while playing this with my co-host here. Uh, hey, no. somebody watch my back, and he refuses. Um, hey, I, w I was watching. I was watching. Yeah, the front. but you I didn't tell playing, me that somebody I was, was. You I didn't was tell playing, me somebody was in front yes, of you. Yes, I did. No, you didn't. I pinged no, it. You did. I you pinged it. it. I, I pinged was too it. Busy. Okay, <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about this later. <laughs> Anyways, uh, round number four, the Mountaineers were on defense once again. Is going to be on that first floor site. Looks like the kitchen site. Um, kitchen and dining room. Now they're going to be running a castle. Solis, Mozzie, Echo, and Legion. Whereas the Firebirds on attack look like they're going to be running Sledge, Buck, Zofia, uh, Iana, and Ace. But before I could even say that, Ice Helix taking out the Echo, which I got to be honest, is a very good pick. Mm -hmm. Because Echo can stop you from planting. You know, but, you know, there's the downside of they have to be on the camera. You know, you can shoot the cameras, you can shoot the drones. But that is the potential. So now the Firebirds don't have to worry about that. Now the Mozzie might cause some issues. But the castle's not going to cause any issues because Ice Helix is able to get that double kill. I oh, know, the, the single kill. I think Xerxes got the other one. Um, taking out the castle could be a great choice. Um, I am getting word that it was a double kill. So I was right. My instincts were correct. <laughs> but Firebird's, you know, really working on this. Now we do see uh, Tenshi running in, oh. taking one person out. But the uh, there was another Mountaineer there to help them out. A little bit of over aggression from Teshi there, but also, I don't know, maybe it was just kind of a, I wasn't expecting somebody to be right there. It's a very hit or miss, you know, because I mm -hmm. think I would be in the mindset too, and I would do exactly that. So there's no shame in that, I think. Um, Sledge is a great choice, especially against that castle, because as you can see, Wispy's just going to open up that castle wall with no issue. Um, but. You know, time is still on the clock. The Firebirds are a little bit faster in this push. They have the vertical play opened up, but you got to be watching out because you, the vertical play is not a, a, a game-saving play almost. You cannot guarantee a win if you're shooting from above. Uh, we do see the Firebirds dropping the diffuser, trying to switch it around. Um, not quite sure which Firebird has it on hand right now. Now, Wialku is the designated diffuser holder. Um, Livid is opening up a little bit of a rotate hole, which is... Um, you know, double-edged sword. Now there's a little bit more lines of sight for the Firebirds to get a pick um, across sites. But we will see. We'll see. I think uh, the, the Mountaineers are playing very smart. You know, they're playing slowly, making sure to play defensively, not pushing too far forward. 
the Firebirds playing the vertical play is also smart, but you have to be on site. You know, I, I, I was said it before, you, you can play the vertical play all you want, but you're not on site. You, if you can't get kills, you can't just keep waiting for somebody to walk in, because as we're seeing the Mountaineers do, they're just not going to walk on the site. Um, Quisby, though, able to get a pick on Cam Louie, and Ice Helix wow. with a triple kill, taking out Livid. Will we see the quadruple kill from Ice Helix? Probably not, but the Firebirds need a plant right now. They have the diffuser, and Wealku is going to be setting up that diffuser. And that go. is not even going to be needed because Xerxes is going to be taking out Boo. Now, I like that. I think that was a great round for both teams. Yeah. You know, despite the Firebirds gaining the high ground so early on, you know, being able to open it up, the Mountaineers were playing smart and were like, yeah. hey, I can't be on site without somebody seeing me, so I'm just going to play off site to the point where I can see on site. It's a strategy the Firebirds play all the time. So it's it's great to see that, you know. Yeah. It is great to see other teams doing the same thing. Also, especially because it works. It really does. Yeah. You don't have to be on site to hold site. Yeah, they didn't give up too much space either. They still kept their hold out. They just kind of moved around just to make sure that they weren't going to be killed from the uh, from the ceiling <laughs> yeah. above. So j just really well done. And, really well and done. just a great defensive round for them. Oh, yeah. And, and Firebirds, too. Uh, uh, just really good at, for that early kill from Ice Helix and then double kill. <laughs> yeah. Like, that yeah. that helped out a ton. And then, you know, Firebirds can relax. And it's just like, okay, now we have a lot more wiggle room that we can work with. We can play this a totally. little bit They, little they bit were more. able to play yeah. a little bit slower, which is, funny enough, something we constantly complain about that the Firebirds are doing <laughs> too much of. But sometimes it's okay. Yeah. It is okay. Slow and steady sometimes wins the race. <laughs> but we are heading on to round five. Both teams tied up two to two on Chalet. And we see the Mountaineers running that second floor once again, running that Jaeger, Bandit, Mute, Mira, and Thorn. Mira, I think, is a good choice on this site. Personally, though, I think Thorn might be a great choice. You know, you're able to kind of plant those mines sporadically in places that are going to be really important choke points for the Firebirds, you know, choke holds um, that the Firebirds have to pass through. So if they can use those th thorn kills, not necessarily to get a kill, but to definitely slow them up, mm -hmm. you know, it's going to work out because that indicator isn't the biggest thing in the world. Um, I've fallen ill to that many a time. But the Firebirds on the attacking uh, side, running that Lion Ying, Zofia, uh, Iana, and Ace. The lion is a pretty good choice. I think lion. I think lion's underrated. In all honesty, oh, most definitely. Not necessarily. You're not necessarily guaranteed to get a ping. If it is, it's great. But it's more of a hey, don't move. Mm -hmm. It's like when you know in the cha cha slide, freeze. <laughs> you know, nobody's and clapping. Everybody their, claps nobody's their hands. clapping their hands <laughs> when you're freezing. You are panicking mm -hmm. because a lot of times too, uh, the attacking team will use that lion sonar pulse to kind of stop people dead in their tracks as they push forward. Yeah, you know? it, it changes the tempo of the entire, uh, um, for both sides. Mm -hmm. And I think that is, it's a big advantage and disadvantage because whenever someone line pings and I know they're near me, I'm just like, okay, they're gonna push in. And please like, don't push, please don't push. They're like please in don't one push. second, I'm just like, okay. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I'm always saying. Unfortunately, <laughs> Xerxes was taken out by the mute. But the Firebirds, you know, still a lot of time. You know, there's no shame. You know, losing somebody is definitely causing, putting them at a disadvantage. But, you know, it's not the end of the world. It'll cause some issues Ooh, and make them slower. Oh Unfortunately, no. Ice Helix being taken out of a very crucial point, a very crucial position. So that's going to cause some issues. Quisby trying to lay down some fire from a window. But the mute, Cam Louie, is just going to kind of walk up the stairs and say, oh, hey, how's it going? Almost like a, a somebody working at a drive-thru. <laughs> I'll take your order. I like that. <laughs> I want two number nines. Number nine large. <laughs> <laughs> two you know, number 45s. <laughs> and a large soda. I haven't heard that in so long. Oh, that's a good one. Oh! Teshi pulling the Twan maneuver. using Ying causing issues pushing in and having a great time while doing it. Taking out one of the Mountaineers. Firebirds now finally evening it out. 25 seconds left on the clock, so not all the time in the world. Unfortunately, Quisby falling to Cam Louie. Cam Louie pulling off a double kill there, which I got to say, I'm in, I'm not. I, I'm impressed. Oh, Teshi, wow. though, taking out Boo from a really good long shot. Oh, uh, dear. Teshi just barely seeing Cam Whoa. Louie, but able to get the pick. But the Firebirds need a plant right now. Teshi needs a plant. They can't afford this. And Claude is probably just going to hide and take cover because they're watching oh. k And unfortunately, the, I think... 
you think Teshi got greedy there? No, I don't no? think so. I mean, uh, hindsight is awful. <laughs> <laughs> hindsight in this game is, I think, the number one enemy. Uh, I wouldn't have turned back. Personally, I wouldn't have turned back for the kill. I wouldn't. Have. I don't think you would have made it anyway. I, yeah. Because there's so much information that you still had to process you when to you're trying the, to yeah. get there. Yeah. yeah. I I don't think you would have made it either way. And I like securing the kill. You know, it gets the KD up. And <laughs> playing for the KD. Okay, I see. Oh yeah. Makes not caring like about winning. Caring but, about the KD. But at the same time, I don't think they're. Someone's they're... not a team player. Oh, never. you heard it here. <laughs> Toner doesn't play with a team. <laughs> There's, no, I just there might outside. be a T and an E in team and toner, but there's no O and <laughs> there's no Ron. There's no, no Ron, Ron in team because you take t you take. Nah, I'm not getting into that right now. <laughs> it's not worth it. No, I, I don't like playing as a team. I like being outside, you know, playing Kali, sitting in in a little. He admitted it. He admitted it, and that's why he's sitting right here. Yeah, and not in there. I don't want to sit there. <laughs> too much pressure. <laughs> too much pressure. Way too much pressure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anyways, round number six. The Mountaineers are leading in the rounds. Three to two. We do see they're running an Azami, Bandit, Mute, Mira, and Jaeger. Once again, very solid composition for the Mountaineers. Whereas the Firebirds running a Thermite, Monty, Glaz. I told you. I told you. I told you. All right. Glaz. <laughs> A Nomad and an Iana. Now, I think it's be it's all because they have Monty with EMP grenades able to open up the side. Now, we'll see. You do see they have the Bandit. The Bandit is ready to Bandit trick, despite the Bandit already placing the Bandit, two of the Bandit batteries. Um, could be the move. It could be the move. Now, Quisby's going to try and open it up, but we're going to see, probably going to be placing down a f little bit. Now, see, here's the downside with Thermite. Is oh, it made not it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh and wow. And he's just gonna say, "Oh hey, hi." He's gonna say, oh, "Boo!" How's and it scare going? And take out Boo. <laughs> um, it's like the the character from Monsters Inc. That's what I was thinking the first time you My said it. Like asking. every time I think of it, <laughs> it's a great movie. Great movie. It's a great movie. But Firebirds putting. I was gonna say Thermite is very difficult to to play against the Bandit trick. Um, I, but Teshi playing the Monty. Once again, being, um, I wouldn't say the substitute for Tuan, but because we've seen Teshi play phenomenally previously. Uh, but, oh my Ooh, gosh, I see it's waiting for that Mira to peek. And exactly like the, exactly. Uh oh, here knew, comes the C4. Knew exactly what was going to happen. The C4 going out from Cam Louie, but it wasn't enough. Cam Louie trying to get a little bit of an angle on the Monty, but the Firebirds have played the greatest strategy and are really trying to just take out. They're just trying to hold at this point, but because there's two, two Ooh. Mountaineers, Claude just, just barely, uh, just almost getting the kill on Quisby. Teshi pulling out the sidearm, because <laughs> swapping to your sidearm is faster than reloading. Uh, but we do see, oh, oh. Teshi taking a little bit of damage. Ow. That's not going <laughs> to stop him though, because we all could getting a double kill here, which is the play. Because look at this, they're all distracted. It's mind games. <laughs> it's mind games. We all who's like, hey, they're looking out the door. They're looking over there. They're all they're all they're all excited, like, oh Teshi, Teshi's gonna push in. And then we all who's like, oh hey, how's it going? And walks up behind them and says pets him on the back, basically, just says, You're done. You're done. And has a great time. Firebird securing a flawless round, tying it up though. You gotta you gotta gain that momentum, you know. We've mm -hmm. been back and forth so far. And you got to be careful with that. I think some of these mistakes are a little bit. Defenders protect your. Body you know, I mean, we, the, we lost two of those rounds was just came down to the time. Yeah, you know, and it was just kind of one reason or another. But you just can't afford that, especially going into playoffs. You can't afford to lose in the playoffs. Yeah, <laughs> you really can't. And yeah, I mean, the rounds, the round differential doesn't necessarily mean a lot, but to us it does. To us, it means everything. Because it's just the number that we get to use to brag about how good our team is. <laughs> but moving on to round number seven, the last round for... Oh, no, sorry. The teams have swapped. I, it's <laughs> as if this is the first time I've played this game, apparently. The Firebirds now on defense. Going to be running that second floor site, running a Bandit, a Zombie, Warden, Solis, and Jaeger. Which is a composition the Firebirds now haven't really played recently. What do you think? He's mid yawn. He is mid yawn. No, I'm gonna no, no, I'm not. What was the question again? 
<laughs> Looking at the fibers composition, yeah. what do you think? I overall I like it. I I especially like that we're bringing solace, which is really good. Uh, to get rid of those drones first off, like uh, during the droning phase, because we had a huge problem last week, which is uh, which is the amazing intel from uh, St. John's. So hopefully that they got. Mo oh wait, there is isn't there a drone thing up there? Did we get most of them? Um, I Firebirds have taken out three of the attackers' drones. Two of the f attackers' drones. Um, oh dear. Three of them are still active. Five of them have not been deployed yet. Well, hopefully we can get some of them out of there. But yeah, just really good intel gathering. Same with Gadget. Um, and yeah, I, I'm liking the Azami. Really powerful. But gotta have a Bandit. Gotta have a Jaeger. And and we've seen a lot of good things happen with the Warden. So over overall, I like it. Uh, I, but I'm just I'm not the biggest fan of Warden. I really, just like I, I was playing Warden earlier, inspired by Ice Helix, and I gotta say, I'm really liking Warden. Oh yeah, I, I, was, I, saw I you. actually I actually <laughs> deployed it on time. It wasn't was not blinded despite nobody walking in on those splashes. Oh, um, I was blinded though. I, I, <laughs> yeah, was, I know. I was not a happy camper. He was playing Clash, and I was playing Warden. It worked out. <laughs> Now, we do look at the Mountaineers running an Osa, Sledge, Ying, Nomad, and Ace, but that's not going to stop it because Teshi's just going to see them push in and say, oh, hey, <laughs> remember me? And take it out. Xerxes taking out Boo once again and running a really cool P90 skin. Mm -hmm. I really like that. Some of these, some of the gun skins in this game are really cool. I gotta say, but I see <laughs> like sporting the, the the pink <laughs> on the warden and is gonna be preemptively. Oh wow! Deploying, preemptively deploying the warden goggles. I think that's the third time I've ever seen that. That's the first time I think this season we've watched it on camera. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, it's always good to have a, a first. But that's not oh, gonna stop wow. it. Because Tenshi's just gonna be ready to peek. It's wow. the black ice skin. Oh, it always hang is. on, hang on. Fire, it's five against one. Will, it, will they go flawless? Ooh. Will they go flawless? Ooh. 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 30 Ooh. seconds from now. Is she going to push him? Oh, oh. no! Quisby, no! <laughs> Quisby, how dare you? <laughs> Ice Helix, though, getting the refrag, making sure that it was pretty close to flawless. It wasn't necessarily, uh, it was just more of a, we're just going to play smart. We don't care. You know, Firebirds have had flawless rounds. This, they've already had a flawless round this, mm -hmm. this so far. Tonight, so you know they don't need another one. You know they use Quizby as like a. Uh, or, I shouldn't it, say it, use, it they makes use you feel good. Quizby took one for the team, and said, "All right, we're done with this. I'm, t I'm, I'm taking. I'm, <laughs> I'm letting them get some sort of confidence and you know pushing in." But it worked out. Firebirds going four and one. A little bit. I, I think defense is where the Firebirds are going to shine. It, yeah. That was a phenomenal defensive round. Oh, most definitely. And it, I just say from the roaming, the the roamers that we had out there. <laughs> I got to say, Teshi. Wow. What? Wow. Teshi was just kind of a. Teshi was almost in the a walls menace. at that point. Absolute just like menace. Pop, popping out into the windows, just like, hey. Hello. <laughs> In space, nobody he can hear you scream, but we're not in the space. <laughs> we're, we're, we're in the Alps. We're in the, we're in the Alps, so you can <laughs> scream all you want. Um, but the Firebirds on round number eight can be running that first floor site in the games room bar sites, running a castle, a Azami, Wamai, Jaeger, and Frost. Great composition there. The uh, castle, especially on the site, I think is really underrated. Oh, yeah. Um, especially holding the library. But... Putting your attention to the Mountaineers. Somebody I'm finally super excited to see. We have not seen, I don't think, at all this season. Um, Osa, Buck, Lion, Blackbeard, and Sens. See, I think it's French and it's pronounced Sol. Sol? 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 Uh, but we're going to say Sens, who deploys these very, honestly, I like uh, these very bright holographic walls that basically act as almost like smoke grenades, but you can shoot through them and um, they're flat. <laughs> um, it's like somebody from Valorant. It, it's like it's like a Yin Candela device, but instead of flashes, it's a big line of smokes. Yeah. yeah. The only thing that I don't like is you can shoot through it. You uh, can shoot through them uh, and uh, also mute jammers stop yeah. them. But also Ice Helix on Wamai is just kind of gonna suck them up and just attract them. And I, gonna had, I had a really good idea how to improve songs or songs songs. Is that what if um, what if it was just kind of like a moving reinforcement wall for like 15 seconds? I think it's, I think they're fine. I think they are a fine operator. I gotta say though, unfortunately, Teshi was taken out. So now we do see the Mountaineers are gonna really secure that second floor. 
But like we've said before, you can take that second float. You can take that second. I'm, I'm <laughs> rhyming here. I'm rhyming here. Like we said before, you can take that second floor, but you can't win. Yeah, I forgot how that was gonna end. But um, you can take the second floor. Yeah, you but can take the second floor. You're not gonna automatically win. That's what I was trying to say. That is what I was trying to say. I was trying to make it rhyme. Couldn't make it rhyme. <laughs> Making the bars. miserably. We oh, all dear. taken out by livid there. Fibers lose are dropping one by one. Ooh, I think the plant's gonna stick on that one. And it will. 45 seconds is on the clock. Yeah, I mean, it's coming down to the wire here, but the diffuser being planted is not a good thing for the Firebirds. Ice Helix falling there. Xerxes is just the remaining one. Will we see Xerxes pull off 4K? It's decent positioning, unfortunately. Xerxes not able to... Mm. That was overwhelming. There, a 1v4 is nearly impossible, especially when the diffuser is planted. So, you know, there's it's unfortunate to see. I gotta yeah. say that. But... Firebirds could come back. You know, 4-4, there's still a lot of time to be played. Firebirds could just kind of gain that momentum here. We did see them have that round one, a really good hold. And I think the biggest fault on that round was just kind of getting picked off one by one. Oh, yeah. It just kind of, it was a domino effect at that point, you know. So, what are you expecting from this defense? Hopefully just trying to kill the kill the clock down a little bit more because you, you want to have a good stance for yourself. You want to have more operators than the attackers have and just let the attackers come to you because really your sight, it, 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 what's that quote that you always say that I always forget? It's, it's I say a lot of things. The super cool quote. I say a lot of super cool quotes. The super super cool quote. I'm gonna about I, defense. Gonna get, uh, it's yours to uh, yeah. yeah it's yours it. to lose. <laughs> uh, when you're defending, it is yours to lose. Meaning, you've won the game if you just continue doing what you're doing. Basically, um, if you just continue making sure they don't capture you. Mm -hmm. But we're, you know, I, I think first floor that bar, you know, game room area, very difficult. But I think this kitchen, dining room area, a little bit easier for the Firebirds to hold. So yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Now, Firebirds running a Warden, Mute, Castle, Oryx, and Frost. Gotta say, though, Quisby now running the Warden. Ice Helix swapping to Castles. Trading off with Quisby there. And looking at the Mountaineers, running a Buck, Hibana, Sledge, Blackbeard, and Sens. All the destruction, basically. You got, you got a lot of destruction there. They're going to be playing the heavy vertical play, I bet. Oh, yeah. Especially on this side, it's going to be extremely useful. So the Firebirds really need to try and just keep that second floor safe. Very true. But, you know, I, I think that second floor is definitely the lifeline. I think mm -hmm. when you lose that, it just your odds decrease. Not dramatically, but a decent amount. Yeah, if, it, if it's super early on, but if they can kill the clock down to around 40 seconds, yeah. they still have to break oh, yeah. open all the floorboards, so it, it wouldn't even be worth uh, pushing it till then. So the Firebirds just need to stay safe in, until that happens. Yeah, now we did see Ice Helix really holding that piano area. Oh, Ice wow. Helix, though, taking out Boo, which is funny because that was the same moment we all coo, where the <laughs> camera was watching shocked. So I was like, wait, what? We all coo, though, did get a kill, too. Yeah. So uh, a double uh, kill there for the Firebirds, and that is... Two. Oh, okay. wow. All, remember that time where I was hyping up all the destruction that the Mountaineers have? Yeah, they lost all three of their destructive <laughs> operators, uh, which allows, which means they're not going to really be able to do that vertical play outside of what's already been opened up. There's they that Sens wall coming out, but it doesn't block oh. projectiles. Boom. And Teshi throwing the C4, causing a few issues for the Mountaineers, especially Livid uh, taking him out. Wialku seemingly almost laughing there, but just kind of maybe... Testing out the mo the mouse, you know, making sure to remember. If I turn the mouse, what does it do? <laughs> Just remembering the controls there. Um, GC minimum not even in sight yet, but is going to be right outside of sight. Really going for that case, and we do see there is a Firebird really expecting that, and those gunshots really causing issues because now oh, they know. that's a good one. Though, Blackbeard's win. The Blackbeard shield is just going to take out Wialku. Wialku having a great shot there, but just was the perfect shot, was just the perfect amount of hits mm -hmm. to not hit, not kill him. But you know, yeah. you know what's great right here is Firebirds are not pushing. They're just waiting it out. They already they have Diffuser. Exactly. They just need to kill time. No, and they, they did don't it, need it perfectly. They, they didn't kill time. They killed... Uh, <laughs>
Oh, come on. I just saw the name. I literally just saw the name. The player. Killed the player. <laughs> I was trying to get the username, the one that I was, like, actually staring at the whole time. Uh, I think it was GC Minimum. Uh, but <laughs> just like, it's like when you, it's like when you, you know, you have a test, you know, and you sit down, you're like, you're confident. And then you sit down, the test in front of you, you just forget everything. Oh yeah. You know, or if you like know another language and you talk and they're like, Oh, say this, you know, say something in that language. You're just like, um, um, I, um, <laughs> for, for, what, I, for uh, one, of, one of my tests, like I was studying uh, these uh, acronyms and there's one SME was the subject matter expert. And I, that's like the only one that I could remember. And then when it got to the test, I saw it. I got every other one right. And when it came down to it, I forgot. I did. I did Starbucks matters uh, excellently. Oh no no no! I did like Starbucks must exist. That was it. <laughs> that was it. And I was like, it's, oh it's a, it's no. A, there, there's <laughs> there's three guarantees in life: <laughs> death, taxes, and Starbucks. <laughs> <laughs> and I love it. I love it to hear. Now, Firebird's on round number 10, still on that defense. Going, It's 5-4 and four right now, so the Mountaineer is really holding their own, making sure to not go down without a fight. Mm -hmm. And they're not even really going down at this point. Uh, Firebird's, though, on that second floor, running that bandit, Azami, Warden, Solis, and Wamai. So glad we're seeing some Solis. However, looking at the Mountaineer is running a Ying Fuse Brava Mountain Montaigne and I was about to say Mountain, which is <laughs> Montaigne in French. Um and Zofia. Which Brava, super glad we're seeing, you know, a uh, new operator that has this very large drone almost. It'll it look it basically is like two drones strapped onto like this radar dish. Um <laughs> almost that you could drive around. And hack three for, for, has, has two drones, I believe, mm -hmm. and can hack and three devices each for each drone. So like you know, cameras you see for the Firebirds having they can hack a bandit charge. They can hack a well, my uh, magnet. That's about it. Uh, and uh, cameras. You can hack cameras as well. Yes, you were right. Uh, but that's about it. You know, it's not not a bad operator right now. The Firebirds just aren't exactly. Playing the gimmies, you know, like Capkin. You yeah. can hack a Capkin trip mine as Brava, and I gotta say that is phenomenal. Now we do see GC minimum running the Montaigne is gonna try and push out. Ooh. I say I hype up Brava that entire time, and Brava gets picked off. Tessie with the double kill though, taking out the Zofia as well, which is gonna be really good. Now if they can take out that fuse, I think it's gonna be a great time for them. But easier said than done. Mm -hmm. I think another reason why they brought a Brava is that the, the gun is really nice. The, the Pata is just amazing. Oh, yeah. my. I was about to say, I mean, Montaigne was planting, but the Firebirds were smart and just pushing forward. Oh, wow. Firebirds going flawless. That's redemption. Redemption for the other one. <laughs> <laughs> redemption for the other one that almost was flawless. On the same site, too, which is funny. Yeah, I mean, second but. floor. Second floor. Uh, you. Uh, for almost all sites on this map is that you really had to have an understanding from multiple mm -hmm. perspectives and really know all the ways to push it and defend it because there's a lot of people that will know like everything <laughs> about it because yeah. it's played like I'd say at least one every three ranked every games. Time that, every time that site can be played, it's played. Yeah. Now here's... I So the Firebirds are now in match point. They're still on defense. Now, they are going basement, though. Or no, they're going first floor. Okay, I was about to hype it up yeah, on basement. No, they're going first floor, which is the site the Firebirds lost last time they played. And they're running a Jaeger, Wamai, Castle, Alibi, and Frost. So they're doubling down on making sure you cannot throw anything mm -hmm. onto site. Now, looking at the Mountaineers, who they still have the repick, the attacker repick, and I expect that to be something we see. But um, Mountaineers running an Osa, Buck, Ying, Blackbeard, and Nock. Now, Nock is somebody I really like. Nock is someone you gotta really watch out for. Oh yeah, because Nock is the the roaming attacker. Uh, basically, having a kind of like a, a device that blends Caviera and Vigil's ability. Basically, mm -hmm. jamming any sort of like electronics and making sure you're, you're kind of invisible, but also making it really quiet, making your footsteps really quiet. And what we're going to see from Livid is them, if, is the knock, push in behind the Firebirds. Push in where the Firebirds are not expecting mm -hmm. someone to push in from. And hopefully from basement, because that's going to be really good going up that stairs. Yes. That's exactly what, what I like to do when I play knock on this side, so hopefully it will be the same. And it looks like they're activating it. 
Yeah. So now we do see uh, the Claude and uh, GC Minimum were pushing Ooh. into the library area. Did do a decent amount of damage to Teshi, but it wasn't enough to get the kill. Now we do see Buck is joining them on that second floor. They are really trying to focus on that second floor hold. But again, that might be a distraction for Nock, who's going to be probably pushing from basement. Um, we do see Cam Louie is also going to be on the second floor. They're really going for that library, which is is the smart move. You know, if you clear the library, and we know three of the Firebirds are in that library. And unfortunately, Livid is taking out Xerxes. Like we said, going to be really trying to go alone, trying to roam around. But now the Firebirds are expecting that. No Hey, somebody is there. Somebody's in the kitchen. Ooh. Ice Helix taking out the, the buck, which is going to be a really good pick. Oh, yeah. Now, Teshi really holding this mezzanine area, making sure to stop anybody trying to push in through the lobby. And is going to be there taking out go. the knock, so that is going to be a really good pick for the Firebirds. And unfortunately, Teshi ran out of bullets, but swapping to the sidearm is faster than reloading and tried their best. But, you know, did get a few kills. And here's where you can see oh, Claude wow. is downed. And I, the Firebirds they might not know that. But they just have to really worry about GC Minimum. Mm -hmm. And that's assuming GC Minimum doesn't revive the Osa. Now, if you were in this position, would you go for the Osa res? Or would you go at alone as, as Blackbeard? I would honestly go alone just because they would have... Oh! Okay. I, I didn't know it was, it was a Frost I didn't, yeah, I, I didn't know it was a Frost I thought that they had eyes, but... Uh, yeah. If it was down, I just... I, I don't want... Uh, than to use it as bait mm -hmm. because that is that is a strategy not killing them and just using your teammate as bait <laughs> and it's, it's a little bit of a, a little bit of an aggressive maneuver in all honesty oh yeah but you know I, it might violate a Geneva convention but this is a virtual <laughs> game so it doesn't matter <laughs> just like smoke I mean smoke <laughs> we're not even going to get there but smoke definitely violates a Geneva convention yeah, um, yeah, but yeah, I'd say yeah. so. <laughs> also, one would think a bear trap might, but also... Oh, no. You know, yeah, it, it's your own fault if you fall yeah. into it. Ice Helix laying down some covering fire, not able to secure a kill, but Quisby is going to be holding this blue stair, hopefully taking somebody oh. out. Unfortunately, trying to pre-fire, but it wasn't enough. I think got the they shield got the peak, But Ice Helix is going to peek there in. There we go. Taking out GC Minimum. And then we all who's like, oh, hey, remember me? Don't <laughs> don't look at Ice Helix. Look at me. And taking out <laughs> the remaining player for the Mountaineers. Now, I got to say, though, Mountaineers did really, oh, really yeah. well. Really well all of those rounds. Like, mm -hmm. it came down to, but the Firebirds just gained that momentum towards the end. So they we could see them come back. What I liked is just, like, not being afraid to change at the strategies, mm -hmm. like, multiple times. And it's just, I think that flexibility <sighs> is something to be scared about yeah. going yes. in, going into that, a theme if, park. If anybody from the Mountaineers is watching, that is something we don't see from a lot of teams. Switching it up. Yep. Adapting. Improvising. Change, if it ain't if it's broken, you should fix it. If it ain't <laughs> broke, don't fix it. And we saw that from the Mountaineers. So that shows they're a really good team. Mm -hmm. Firebirds, you know, able to kind of win in the few of these moments where I think they're catching, you know, some of the Mountaineer players off guard. But so are the, the Firebirds are getting caught <laughs> off guard too. It's very hit or miss, very even matchup here. But I'm excited to see what we what we see in game number two, which will be back in about five minutes while we get ready. It's theme park, and I'm excited for that. So grab your popcorn, get ready for that, and we'll be back in just a few minutes. See your future on the horizon? So do we. It's really just the greatest college experience I could have asked for. What really drew me in was having an adventure. I think something really unique about Carthage is that it constantly pushes you outside of your comfort zone. At Carthage College, we will push you to dive deep, to channel your curiosity, and excel in your chosen field. like an individual journey through collaborative effort. And so overall, this has been my college experience, but so many people that I've met have been supportive along the way and they're all looking out for you. So that's really why it feels like a family. As you ignite your true potential and start asking the hard questions, you'll find the answers are just the beginning. That's the moment your purpose comes into view. We are really able to get great one-on-one -on -one action with our professors. So you can't hide in your classroom. You're always actively participating. You'll get recommended for things that you might not have ever been interested in before, and you end up realizing that that might be your passion. 
Everyone here is just so nice, so welcoming. It's really easy to make friends here at Carthage. The biggest change was going from student to young business professional. I love Carthage. It's definitely the people. Living on the lake is amazing. I feel very prepared for my future. I ended up surpassing my expectations. Some things you just need to see for yourself. Come take a closer look at Carthage College. A deer, a female deer. Great. A drop of gold. Oh, we're about oh, live. We're live. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing my warm up. We were doing our warm up. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> <we're not. laughs> it's the first time it's happened, and I actually, of all the things. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, and then in map number two, welcome back, everybody. It is your Firebirds <laughs> versus the WCU Mountaineers. Ah, uh, my my producer sometimes <laughs> angers me. Anyways, I'm so embarrassed. Uh, That's yeah. firsthand embarrassment. We were getting ready. We were hyping. We were warming up. Whatever. We we didn't hear you. We were singing. <laughs> Anyways, we're map number two. Carthage Firebirds versus the Western Colorado University Mountaineers. Map number one on Chalet. Firebirds did really really well, but so did the Mountaineers. Going, I believe the final score was seven to four. Really showing, like honestly, the Mountaineers coming back. A, a few of those rounds. Really upsetting the Firebirds, I think. Uh, catching them off guard, and I think it's because they're playing very smart. They're playing positions. They're you know flanking around. They're playing roaming. It's working out. So going into map number two on theme park, Firebirds are going to be starting off on attack. 
We don't care about the bands because, you know, they're, they're standard. That's your jackal. <laughs> but Mira's going to be banned. That's my guess. Yep. Yeah. No. <laughs> First and the one next there. one's going to be Cade. It's a Cade, mm. on, Cade on defense. Maybe. It's I, Cade. I have Azami. Cade. Azami. Cade. Azami. Cade. Azami. Kaid. 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 Azami. Kaid. Azami. No, the band's going to be Kaid. Please. This is the longest thing. Oh! Okay, so Azami's the band. I'm actually kind of shocked about that, but also I think Azami's great. I'm uh, very happy about that. I'm, uh, that's yeah, really yeah. good for Throne Room. Yeah, that's yeah, really I, I, good I, for Azami's Throne good. Room. Now, unfortunately, we did get word that there's going to be some technical difficulties. Um, oh like, dear! It looks like uh, WCU is calling for a rehost. They had a player who was not able to load into the game. Um, it happens. So there's, you know, they, they, it's it's very common issue so we're gonna take like a quick you know hopefully two minute three minute break uh hopefully returning while we're ready you know <laughs> um, and we will be back uh we'll be back once the technical difficulties are fixed so don't go anywhere sorry about this
Welcome back, everybody. The technical difficulties have been solved. The rehost has been done. The lobby has been recreated. And we're finally, hopefully, hopping into the site. Now, um, you know, this is the first time we're seeing these bands. So, like, you know, who are you expecting? I think it's going to be a Thatcher, a uh, Jackal, a Mira, and a The Zombie Band. Who do you think? And you can't repeat me. You can't copy me. <laughs> a recruit? Okay. Well, recruits another can't be another recruit. Okay, you're 0 for two right now. Another recruit. 0 for three. And Tachanka. Oh, okay. You know, I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm changing my answer. Uh, but <laughs> in all seriousness, we're finally ho hopping hopping into round number one of game number two, Firebirds one game map number one. So <laughs> map round all those different words, but Firebirds. On the attack here on Theme Park, we do see the Mountaineers are running that defense. Once again, it is Theme Park, and we can see that the Mountaineers running that second floor hold in the armory and office, I think it's called. Uh, looks like they're running a Warden, Kaid, Alibi, Valkyrie, and Mira. What do you think of that? I like it. I... I'm a little bit confused on where the um, where the alibis will go because I don't think I've ever seen alibi being played on this site itself. But I I could see it working. Alibi is an extremely strong operator, especially I love with alibi. the gun. I think alibi is great everywhere. You yeah, know, but in all honesty, I I, it's, it's, when I you like place, her with windows though. Just, when you place alibi in places that are not normally placed, mm -hmm. those prisma those prismagram things, I think that works out. You know, because if you know, hey, there's going to be something, there's going to be an alibi prisma in that corner. Yeah. You're going to know, all right, that's not actually alibi. If you place it in just a random position. Oh, I, I was wrong. Sorry, this is second floor. Yeah. Never mind. Second <laughs> floor. I, thought, I thought we were in throne room. No, it's going to be armory and uh, I believe it's called meditation. Um, it, I've, I've heard different uh, call outs for that secondary room. I've heard, you know. Uh, but, you know, Firebirds pointing map one. I think they're going to continue that momentum into map two. Uh, especially since it's, you know, we got that fresh start. Round number one. Firebirds starting their attack, running a Lion, Ace, Ying, Dokubi, and Iana. And I got to say, Tuan swapping back in from uh, Wialku. Um, you know, I, I I said it. Saving saving Tuan for ma map number two, you know. It's a surprise tool to help us later, and it's helping us, I bet. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm predicting it now. Tuan's going to have a great time. Tuan's going to be uh, a, 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 a win condition. Will we see the ace? Will we see Twan get an ace? I'm I'm hoping. I am hoping. But we do see the Firebirds taking pushing into directly onto the second floor. Um, it looks like Teshi and Twan are gonna be doing a uh, breaching together there. Whereas, you know, you so here's the interesting thing. You do see they have that wall is kind of not reinforced and has a hole in it. So the Firebirds could just push in, maybe shoot through the wall, take out somebody. Do a little dance, get down tonight, but <laughs> you never know. It all depends on the placement. Now, because Mir is banned as well, you know, it might work out here. But, you know, the time the clock is definitely the firebird's taking a little bit slow here. Twan just now pushing in basically. Um, and there's 60 seconds left, so they have to do something. Now Teshi trying to do a little bit of poke damage there. Doing a decent amount of damage to Livid and I believe GC minimum. But not enough to get any kills. Now, we do see also the Twan is spotting a Thorn mine, but making sure not to shoot it in fear that they're going to expose their location, which is the smart play. You know, my instinct would be shoot it, but also my instinct is the reason why I am not in a high ranking of this game. <laughs> um, but you'll see how they go. Oh, Unfortunately, Xerxes no. getting blinded, but that's not going to stop him because Twan's going to take out Boo. Will we see Twan get another pick here? We're seeing going to be using the Ying Candela. Blinding a few people, getting there one, we go. and unfortunately oh walking into some crossfire, taken out by Cloud, but Ice Helix taking out Livid, and Cloud getting a refrag on the Quizbee, but Xerxes is going to get right, a refrag. See. Ten seconds. It's all of a sudden a 3v1, and Xerxes can be finally planting, Ooh. unfortunately, Cam Louie. Louie is taking out Teshi. 
Ice Helix needs to protect Xerxes now, but now the Diffuser's planted, so now they just have to def protect that. And now silence. <laughs> <laughs> silence because it's just all about anticipating what your opponent's going to do. Cam Louie, not much help. Ooh, so move a you, little bit. Move a little bit. Little bit. Move a little bit. Little bit. Little bit. Oh, knowing oh. somebody's there. Knowing somebody's there. Ooh. But just look. Oh, hey, there hang we go. on a second. I'm curious. Exchange gunfire with a firebird. With the Xerxes. Exchange the gunfire. And then was kind of aiming down there, watching him, trying to, you know, maybe see if they peek, and then immediately turning their back to it. That was an interesting play there. Um, I, but I honestly, think, I think it might, yeah, it was the time. Well, right? I think because, uh, I think it might have heard Ice Helix reload a little mm. bit earlier because it is a pretty loud animation. So just keeping that in mind and then seeing that there is, like, it was it was open. So it's just like they're going to refrag right off of that or just watch it back. So I thought that was pretty well done because, the thought process I thought was just like they're just gonna wrap around the pillar, so I got a little bit of time to do a wrap around. The little little wrap around. Little wrap around. So I, I thought I thought it was it was smart, but it that was just a really nice step yeah. reach into the yeah. reinforced wall that couldn't even see Ice Helix. Yeah, and I mean I think the the, the quick succession of kills uh, between quick exchange I should say of kills between the teams was just honestly really good mm -hmm. refrags from both players from both teams. So. Um, you know, heading into round two, Firebirds on the are on the attack again. We do see the um, Mountaineers running a Warden, Cade, Alibi, Valkyrie, and Ella. I'm personally very biased. I love Caillou. And on this site especially, I think it's good. You know, you're able to get some clever positioning for the Cade Claws that might cause some issues for the Firebirds to destroy them. Now, the Firebirds running a Lion... Uh, Ace, Ying, Dokubi, and uh, Iana, and they do have the MP grenades, which all depends on where they throw it. But also, they have Iana having the frag grenades, which is great. But also, the Firebirds just might not even need the hard. They don't. They only have Ace as the hard breach. But I, Ace might be able to really work elsewhere. You know, it's about you can use hard breaches on soft walls. You know, so. We'll see how that goes. Unfortunately, we do see a little bit of an alibi there. Um, I might be getting shot by one of the Firebirds, so that might cause some issues. And we also see, we can see on our screen using our spectator vision, that there is, <laughs> there was a Mountaineer that dropped onto that first floor, maybe rotating around to catch a Firebird off guard. Hard to say from this angle, but we do have the Dokubi, which hopefully the Firebirds are going to use and kind of listen for, because Dokubi sends out a ping and basically calls every single person on the enemy team, causing all their phones to basically vibrate, and you have to listen for that. You know, it's an odd, it's a sound cue up until the defenders either wait out, or the, yeah, the defenders wait out the uh, time limit or they're able to stop it, but you can listen for that. But what matters is actually listening for that and communicating. Oh, that that's said, a great kill. Great kill from Tuan there, seeing the person just kind of walk in the perfect line of sight there, uh, which honestly, there's no sh that I wouldn't have known. There, there was really no way of knowing. Hey, that is exactly where a firebird is looking for. And we do see the EMP grow, the EMP grenade going out from Quizby. Uh, the attempt to uh, bandit trick there, on, or Cade trick, it looked like almost. Unfortunately, Claude taking out Xerxes, but Xerxes was able to get the ace charges out on time. So definitely going to help the firebirds better later on, basically. Um, despite Xerxes out of play. Quisby unfortunately taken out by Boo there. Ice Helix in that yellow staircase may be able to secure something here using the frag grenades very carefully, making sure to throw something into armory, but it wasn't enough to get a kill. 30 seconds left on the, 35 seconds left on the clock. The Firebirds really needed to make some sort of progress here because it's a 3v4, so they're not in the favor, you know, in terms of players and in the fight. But you never know here. You know, we do see Tuan maybe throwing a Ying charge, a Candela through the wall, maybe opening up something. We do see there is going to be a Mountaineer immediately to the left, but it's not going to be go. enough. Despite them looking away, not getting flashed probably. Firebird's getting two kills there. Unfortunately, Ice Helix now the remaining Firebird, and it's a 1v2 with the five seconds left on the clock, and it's not going to look good. Oh. And unfortunately, the Mountaineers are taking that point. They're taking that round. Yeah. What went wrong there? Just pushing from one from one side. Like last time we pushed, it was a pretty good hybrid approach to it. 
But this time, it was just a lot of time wasted on just one area. I would have liked to see uh, uh, some firebirds going under mm-hmm. and coming in from the other side, just meeting in the middle. Because th- th- I think that would have worked it's a, it's a lot better. It's a pincer better. maneuver. You gotta mm-hmm. you gotta clamp it. You the know? sandwich. It's like a claw game of the arcade. You know, if the claw doesn't close, it doesn't do anything. But when the claw does close, <laughs> you're going to walk away with a really nice stuffed animal, probably. Defenders protect- or around in Rainbow is, Six Siege. Or around in Rainbow Six Siege, which is sometimes better. I particularly do like stuffed animals from an arcade machine. You got that, that victory, that glory. <laughs> you know, the, nothing matches that taste. <laughs> but so does, you know, around in Rainbow Six Siege. So it's very hit or miss. Now, we do see very interesting composition. The, the Mountaineers are going to be running... That throne room, and we see gonna be they're running a warden, Kaid, mute, Rook, and Jaeger. Now here's the thing I forgot about Rook. Okay, Rook has the has these armor platings that you know anybody on their team can pick up. I forgot they added the feature that now with those armor platings you can self revive yourself, mm-hmm. which is helpful. It is yeah, especially when you have that damage reduction. It does take. Oh dear. Wiz, that is interesting. Now I know there's a rule in the rule book saying there is a time limit before you can do any sort of get any kills that was close to a kill. And honestly, I might have I might have purposely allowed it. I don't. It might. It's like first five seconds I think of the round you can't get a, a, a kill uh, through looking outside the window. Uh, I personally. That's unfortunate to see, but Quizby's just probably going to take a little bit slower now. Focusing on the back. Unfortunately, though, Livid is right there. Right in the peak, it has secured the case basically. Um, has the diffuser in sight, is just gonna hold that. Firebirds need to focus on that at this point. Their, their objective has switched from plant the diffuser to get the diffuser. You know, mm-hmm. it's like in Call of Duty the rules for the rules to freedom secure the keys. <laughs> good game, good, good quote. Oh, there oh we but go. the but livid having. Two angles to attack from. Firebird's closing in. It's the pincer maneuver. Yeah, it's, the, it's the arcade <laughs> claw that's working out. My analogy makes sense. Ha <laughs> ha. To all those who have doubted me. I remember um, when I was like five. Like I, I won one of those super big, uh, the, the super big prizes from the big claw machine, and I gave it to a little girl, and I was like, that Aww. just that just made my day. But then I don't think I've won what, ever. Winning it or giving it to the. Winning it, or giving it to the little girl okay. after winning it, because I don't think I've ever after won one of those big, uh, the the big claw machines ever again. Shame. It was Ice awesome. He- hang on, Ice Helix is down in this fight. Boo took a bit of damage. Now Ice Helix was in a good position for Quizby to wrap around, and they were able to take Boo down. Now that looked like it was going to be a down, but they we did see Twan was able to peek around and secure the kill, which is so important oh. because the rook could the rook air armor plating could have allowed them to get the revive. Now we do see they're using the Yana drone to kind of scope it out, recon, intel, all those adjectives and bounds. Um, none of those were adjectives. But, um, it's important to gain that intel and kind of um, gather, make sure you know, hey, is somebody right here? Um, Teshi can be trying to attack from above. But 30 seconds on the clock, the Firebirds are not near, not really inside of sight. They have the vertical play, but like I was saying, however many times. You gotta Unhappy find a way one. in. <laughs> you, you got. You can't win from above. You can definitely help yourself, but you need to be pushing in. Now we do see they're gonna be peeking. Quizby was able to get just basically a single bullet into that foot of uh, GC minimum, but it wasn't enough. Now Quan is gonna be using the candelas, making sure nobody can see on sight. But it's not enough. Nine seconds left, and the Firebirds are gonna be attacking. Are gonna be finally planting three v two. Two seconds on the clock, and Quizby oh, wow. finally able to plant the diffuser, but now they just have to hold it. And Cam Louie taking out Quizby there, and it's now 2v2, but the Firebirds are not at the advantage here health-wise. So we got to see teamwork here. Ice Helix making sure to kind of watch for anybody coming from behind throne room. And it looks like Tuan might have heard that call out. And they're dividing and conquering. Cam Louie, though, is going to be def- de- breaking the diffuser, destroying, counter-diffusing, that's the word. And Ice Helix having to push it. Double kill from Cam Oh, Louis. wow. But Ice Helix is on another level and it has ice in his veins. <laughs> that was... That was risky. That was scary. Yeah, that was really scary. That made me not comfy. <laughs> <laughs> I was scared, but the Firebirds were able to come back and 
by just a very small margin. <laughs> by the hair the of their chinny chin now, chin. Now, once they planted the diffuser, the odds of success drastically change in favor of the Firebirds. Mm-hmm. And especially in the fact that it was a 1v1. Ice Helix pushing in. It did work out. You know, hindsight, again, biggest threat here. Could have gone really wrong, though, because if Ice Helix died, that would have been the round over mm-hmm. for them. Um, because it was just kind of an easy counter defuse almost for the Mountaineers, but it happens. Firebirds two to one. If this is this is the longest three rounds I think. Oh, I know. Long. It's been a while. Uh, coming down to the wire, all these rounds. So we'll see how this goes. Round number four. Firebirds still on the attack. Western Colorado University still on that defense, running that Warden, Cade, Oryx, Rook, and Thorn. They're really sticking with that that Rook, which honestly, I think. The potential and the, the pros outweigh the cons, you know. The cons and you is, get more health. Too. Exactly. I mean, it's, you just, get it's more just wonderful. You get more health and you have that self res. Mm -hmm. The counter, the con to that situation, those are the pros. The con is you don't have as many defensive gadgetry. But if you're confident, hey, I can win in my mechanical skill, I can win in the gunplay, I don't need any magical mm -hmm. high tech gadgets to. Once again, though, Quizby. So one of the Mountaineers peeking through the window, lighting, doing a ton of damage to Quisby. That's... I don't know how I feel about that. I, I personally, I don't like when players uh, peek through windows and try and get an easy easy damage almost because it's like... It, I, I don't know. It's is, it, like, is it the against the rules? Uh, it is the for... It's, so it's, a, it's against the rules to get a kill. Mm. And I think they might have been really watching and trying to just really read the, the damage output. Doesn't mean you know, it's it's I don't know. I feel like it's almost like it's comparable to like taking candy from a baby. Now in competitive play, I feel like I think anything's on the table. You know, it's like there's there's no shame in really trying to just win. Mm -hmm. You know, every strategy is possible. Uh, but when I'm seeing that in like ranked or quick play, that's when I'm like, all right, that's just tragedy. Uh, Livid was downed by, I assume, a Firebird there, but because I'm hoping they have the Rook, but it wasn't enough. Oh, They're going to wow. see the frag grenade. The, I believe they, I bet they were trying to self-revive there, but Ice Helix securing the kill there with the frag grenade is exactly what you need. Um, they're able to just make sure, hey, I don't have to worry about a thorn anymore. Mm -hmm. It's a thorn in my side, <laughs> and I don't have to worry about it. Uh, that being said, though, they no longer have any frag grenades, so... That is something you do not want to deal with. That is something uh, you got it causes some issues. Now, Ace Charge is going out onto the throne, which is honestly a really good position for it because now they're able to kind of see behind the throne, which is a, a very common place because it's a really good cover spot. Um, but we do see there is going to be a Mountaineer behind it. Xerxes kind of... Oh, okay. <laughs> I was about to say. <laughs> a little bit out in the open, but was able to really just notice that and literally adapt. <laughs> adapt in the sense of move three inches to his face. <laughs> um, but it's working out. Now the Firebirds, they do know somebody's there. So Xerxes is going to try and maybe get a little bit of a gunplay. But oh, because no, no, no. was looking at the wrong... You know, there's two angles to look at and just 50-50 shot almost. We have the power of, you know, spectator vision, so we knew that was going to be wrong. However, Cam Louie, though, did get Ice Helix out of the picture, and 25 seconds left on the clock. Quisby having basically no health here. Firebird's really needing to push in, you know? They can't afford to wait these these long moments. We're seeing Tuan pop the Candela. Is hopefully going to catch one of them off guard, but that's not going to be enough because Teshi is just going to secure the kill, but then Tuan's going to oh, wow. secure the kill, and it's going to plant. Tashi's gonna oh, get another wow. kill. Tashi is literally on fire right now. And GC Minimum is the only person left. Now the diffuser's been planted, it is now GC Minimum and ready the, to win. Uh, oh, wow. It's, this is gonna be. Oh, dear. This is, this is close. They know where GC Minimum is, which is really good for the Firebirds. But will we see a kill here? I almost don't want to talk. But there we go. There oh, we GC go. Trying to get the peak aimed low. Where I, see that's the thing that I always say. You know, there's a thing called you just a strategy in R6 is aiming at head height. You know, expecting somebody to be at a certain height and then shooting their head because a, a headshot is an instant kill. And but the head heights are different if they're you know standing up or mm -hmm. they're crouched. And I feel like I pick up the wrong one every time. <laughs> <laughs> so that was you know that was a difficult, especially with the time. You know, there's a lot of pressure. 
it gets to sometimes that I mean it was it was close you know but ultimately it came down to Tuan seeing the opportunity. Now we did get word I was correct the NECC rule book states that spawn peeking is allowed. A spawn peek resulting in the death of an attacker during the first two seconds of the action phase is not allowed. Two seconds seems like a very small window, but you know it. it, it Anything, anything holds, I guess. Well, I think it's, I, uh, and we see Alyssa, Chalet, Theme, and Villa, and then those have some really, like, yeah. quick yeah. Uh, spawn yeah. peeking yeah. angles, and we can yeah. see the one from the window. So, it, yeah, that, that that's why this map is not loved by all, but I just say, I just go on the other side. Yeah. Because, yeah, well, like, well, there's no windows, and I just repel up there. Yeah. It's a lot well, safer. And it's, yeah, and it's very clear, the, the Mountaineers, I, I can't, I wasn't quite sure able to see just who was doing the damage. But you know it's smart. You're just you're not getting a kill. You're just you're just. Oh, it looks like making uh, them, you're damaging might them. Might be bit. happening again. Yeah, we do see one of the mountaineers probably gonna be getting ready for that. But one of the firebirds could be ready for that and get the kill. You know because there's no the firebirds getting a kill. There's no rule against that. Spawn peeking is when the defender looks out into the spawn. Um, but the Firebirds could now. Yeah, Quisby, it looks like they're, all, they're finally avoiding it all entirely. Yeah, <laughs> Quisby finally unscathed from that, um, which <laughs> it's, it's, it's very surprising. Hard. Like it, both of them have been against Quisby. <laughs> I think that's just coincidental. <laughs> and spawn peeking is just very hard to avoid. You mm -hmm. know, it it really is because there's just a lot of cover that doesn't exist outside. Now there is cover, especially on the site, but there's also just a ton of open area. So you got to be watching out for that. But I think the Firebirds are pretty smart and know what to, you know, do, how to counter all that. Now the proximity alarm going off, but, you know, it's not surprised. Ice Helix, though, could shoot through that wall, that soft wall. Could have shot through that soft wall to his left and gotten probably got a kill. Because um, we did see there was a Mountaineer who was stationed behind it. Now Tuan is going to be taking that vertical play uh, from the roof. But Firebirds just really watching for that audio. Watching... To hear it, hey, somebody walking up the staircase. Um, Quizby just kind of has the LMG and is just like, all right, I'm, <laughs> Might I'm done. Might as well. <laughs> Which, that is something I love to do. It's just kind of suppressive fire. It's not so much mm -hmm. getting a kill. It's just, I'm going to cause so much chaos that the other team is going to fear me. I mean, you have so many <laughs> bullets. Might, exactly. as, might as well especially, give it a shot. Especially on Tachanka. Well, especially, <laughs> and especially when you see on here, like, the amount of times that the, like, um, the reticle, like, just goes above them, like, oh, through a yeah. wall, and no one yeah. even knows it. Like, I just brain pray. You never yeah, know. Yeah, well, and also, the risk is, you know, every time you get a kill through a wall, there's there's always that moment of, oh, they're, they're hacking, you know. <laughs> oh, they can see me through the walls. A there lot are of times so it's many coincidences. <laughs> a lot of times it's coincidences. A lot of times it's, you know, oh, hey, I pinged you. I yeah. saw with the camera. Um, but, you know, there are some times where it's just like, all right, maybe they will hack. Uh, not in this game, though, because... Well, not in this. Yeah, I don't think we've fight. seen a. No, that, seen nobody, everybody here is playing legitimately, um, which is. Oh no! Just play. I mean, I don't think oh. we've seen a. Um, Hang on a, a second! What, oh wow! What, what a strategy! They opened up the wall huh? to use the side effect of opening up part of the other wall. That's I interesting. Don't think, oh, wow. that is an interesting play. Ice Helix, though, able to secure a kill there. Tuan, unfortunately, getting picked off. But oh, Ooh. there's they secured Ooh. it down. And, but they're oh, going to wow. secure a kill. Yes. And they secure <laughs> another kill. Will the Firebird secure the final kill? Livid's peeking, peeking through. The diffuser's being planted. Firebirds cannot afford for that Sneaking to be stopped. Around. But they're going to see the kill, and they're going to just <laughs> walk through the gridlock. They don't even know. They do see. Oh, Quizby getting the there kill. We there we go. go. Quizby getting the kill. <laughs> oh, what a round there. That was a beautiful hole. I, I've never seen something like that, that before. That... Was so good. That, I I don't know if that was accidental or if they knew that existed. No, I that that I've has heard to about be. that happening, but I have never gotten it to work. Yeah, that that, that, that was opening cool. up a wall with the second. I I love that. I love that, and I hope we see more. You know, I hope so. That too. being said, it was kind of funny though that Livid used it mm -hmm. and saw the gridlock and just like took the time to line up the perfect shot. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if it was like bikini body or uh, coconut bra that uh, <laughs> that that made yeah. those, that because they they do things like you that. Know, like I've Valk seen spawn, on, yeah, or Valk. I I've seen on this site um, lineups for frag grenades from outside. Oh, you know, that would have been the, 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 the <laughs> typical be cool. the typical you know slum dank. Lineup that we oh, saw in Valorant. Larry. That we saw in La in Valorant, 
You do it here where you literally line up your crosshair with like a pixel. Like line it up with the window and then the pixel or whatever. And like stand on this this piece of grass you see in the ground. Look aim at, at this pixel angle. number one thousand and seventy two. If you hold it for exactly two seconds <laughs> using the clock and throw it looking at this exact angle, it's gonna just so happen to explode right on this hot this you know, lineup Larry is so busy that he never wants to play video games with me. I get so sad. Yeah, yeah. We gotta hey, get him seeds. Hey, Slumdank, if you're watching this, lineup Larry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh, what a pl Anyways, Firebirds, round six, definitely a, definitely a different round here. Uh, Firebirds still on that attack. This is the last round, though, until we switch. Quizby on that Lion, Xerxes on that Ash, Twan finally on that Blitz that we know and love. Teshi on that Sledge and Ice Helix on that Iana. Now, looking at the Mountaineers running the same composition as before, which honestly I like. It really boils down to enforce, reinforcing your mechanical skill. Yeah, you do have the Thorn Gadgets and the Cade Claws, mm -hmm. but like Warden, Oryx, and Rook are just very much a, I'm going to lock down and double down on my gunplay. And because that is what the game comes down to, it's gunplay. If you have phenomenal gunplay, you don't need gadgets. You just boost that gunplay. You support that gunplay. Yeah. Um, and we have seen the Mountaineers have really good mechanical skill, really good gunplay, which it's very clear. You know, Rook able to kind of secure oh, that. Oh, wow. That being said, Xerxes, though, dodging, weaving, dodging, ducking, dip, dipping, diving, and dodging <laughs> the Warden and is able to win the, the gunplay there. So it was, was unfortunate to see, but uh, Xerxes is securing the kill and is on Throne Room. So they're able to kind of use that to their advantage, making sure to clear the rooms one by one, especially now they have one less roamer to worry about. Now we can see using our spectator vision that the Mountaineers really have two roamers left. They have two people not on site. So hopefully we can see the Firebirds kind of watch out for that. Um, but, you know, we I think, it, I think they know that. I think they have the intel and the recon to know, hey, they have people roaming. Ah, uh, but we do see Xerxes was looking at the top of the staircase might have expected someone to be there um not quite sure what the strategy hmm. is there kind of looking maybe just kind of listening oh, oh. what a beautiful beautiful strategy there we go from xerxes read that, that was read that great. like a book <laughs> read that like a book turning to chapter two the book of plays there you go that is what you want um touchy though i just on, realized we're on lab that's yeah. I haven't seen Lab in so long. See, I, I call it something different. Oh, yeah. I <laughs> I know what it, you what call it used it to lab, be. I call it, what are they making? Ah, uh, um, yeah. <laughs> oh, but the thorn trap. Oh, my oh that's a lot of damage. <laughs> Wait, your voice just cracked. Twan dodging the thorn trap, but Xerxes walking and falling prey <laughs> to it. Didn't die, but did a lot of damage. A lot that being of said, damage. Quizby getting a kill there. Using oh, Lion's dear. LMG works out all the time. And the smoke grenade coming out. Ice Helix is down. But unfortunately, Twan get falling prey to the C4. Teshi peeking. Uh -oh. The Firebirds are falling one by one here. Ice Helix is down, so it still really is a 2v2. But the Firebirds planted. Quizby taking a ton of damage. Xerxes just holding the angle. Quizby missing and taking, getting killed. No. Oh, oh no! Now Ice Helix is down, so the fire the the Mountaineers. Come are on, to... get back up! Oh, they're gonna they're <laughs> gonna secure the kill, double kill for <laughs> Boo there. Ah, oh, that <laughs> I'm actually really disappointed. The Firebirds were playing so well there, but it just fell apart. What went wrong there? I don't think I have a good answer for that. Like, it just, I, I just good defense. I mean, just yeah, amazing yeah. plays and amazing holds by the the Kaid and all that, and a good thorn trap to yeah. to get our ass think, super low. I think also since Twan, you know, died from that um that C four kill was definitely a, a a big, you know, big yeah. stab. You know, from the just fire a bunch roof. of unfortunate events yeah. happening. A series of unfortunate events <laughs> that is just only consisting of. Teshi and Twan just like falling ill right away. <laughs> and then Ice Helix being down for a majority of that, like that's just heartbreaking sometimes because it's like it's just, spectating. You're, you're not even spectating because I you you are more at a disadvantage if you're downed than when you're dead. Yeah. Because when you're downed, there's literally nothing you can do. Whereas just if you're there. dead, you have the cameras, you can spectate. <laughs> but, you know, Firebird swapping to the defensive round, which I'm expect I'm hoping they do far better now. 
Um, despite them doing really well on attack, um, I think they really excel at defense. So looking at this throne room hold, Firebird's running a Cade, Jaeger, Oryx, uh, Mute, and Valkyrie. Whereas you look at the Mountaineers, looks like they're running a Thermite, Sledge, Lion, Montaigne, and Ying. Pretty interesting. Now, Montaigne against Oryx is going to be in favor of the Oryx. But if we see the Mountaineers playing with a Monty, as you should, actually playing with a Monty, um, we might see it not work out, you know? But it's it's very, very hard to say at this point. It all depends on how well they play. Yeah, for sure. It looks like they're going to be breaching in from the east side. So let's see where that... Just trying to take second yeah. floor going looking... Okay, look, going top down vertical play. Yeah. Now, I think opening up those hatches, especially with a sledge, is just important. You know? Oh, yeah. Well, like, gaining even more entries to attack from and maybe getting getting a little bit of lines of sight, you know, maybe getting an early pick. Or even Boo. if you don't go down. Even if you don't go down, you, you're right. It still gives that anxiety, you yeah. know, upstairs yeah. for the other defenders. Yeah, fortunately, Xerxes getting spotted by a drone, a little bit of gunplay exchange from both teams. Oh, oh, Xerxes wow. doing a ton of damage to the sledge. Not enough to secure a kill, though. We do see Tuan against the Monty, but we do see the rest of the Mountaineers playing behind the Monty, which is what you want. Unfortunately, Xerxes fell to Cam Louie there. 4v5, and the Firebirds getting picked off, you know, maybe one by one here. It's, it's you know, not the end of the world, but you just got to be smart. You can't afford to kind of just, like like I said before, the domino effect. You lose one, you lose another, you lose another, you lose another, and eventually that's it, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, hopefully that the Firebirds can kill a little bit more time. Because already at the Western Col uh, Colorado Mountaineers, they've been they've been really good at taking second floor. Right, you are. But we do see the Lion Pulse going out. Tuan was about to hop up the hatch, which honestly is good, a good move here. Probably gonna be able to kind of go behind the Mountaineers, catch them off guard. Mm -hmm. um, the oh! Teshi getting a Teshi getting a C4 kill on the Ying, which honestly is a pretty good choice here. Unfortunately, wasn't able to get there. Unfortunately, Tuan was picked off. So Monty's going to be a little bit more of an issue from before. We do see the melee kills might work out here. Ice Helix taking out Boo finally. It is now 3v3. The C4 could be the move here, but Teshi is alone. Doesn't have the C4. And we see there is going to be a Mountaineer oh. behind the Monty. And nobody was able to support Teshi there. Ice Helix is now alone. Taking out one player, but the C4 is going to be, or the diffuser is going to be planted. Oh, oh, wow. Ice Helix getting the triple kill. But here's Monty's the thing. Monty's the last it one. It is Monty versus oh. Ice Helix. But Ice Helix has a C4. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, oh. No, it's an Ice Helix might. Oh, my God. This is this is kind of funny to watch, but Come heartbreaking on. to watch because it's risky here. Oh, my gosh. This is, oh, you got to be careful here. Oh, you gotta go a little bit quicker than that. Oh! Oh, oh my god. Oh! oh! Quad kill as well! What? Ice wow! Oh my god, what a play for Ice Helix. What a play. That's going down in history. Oh! <laughs> First of all, Ice Helix with a quad kill. That's impressive in itself. But also, I gotta say though, that Monty, man, that. Wow, that, that, that was, was well played. That to say that was well played is an understatement. Oh, for sure. Dodging, first of all, dodging Ice Helix. Second of all, dodging the Scotston C4 and melee combo. Like that is the <laughs> when you are playing against a one v one as Monty and the other person has C4. Usually that's game over there, but yep. somehow it really worked out. Now, now I I gotta say though, Ice Helix was not preemptively activating it because if you did it, it would stagger it would stagger Monty, but also do do damage. But then when you don't have it in play, there's no you know I think part of that was also the mind game. Yeah. You know when you are a Monty and you're playing against a C4, you have to worry about that C4. Hey, I can't go near that thing. If my back is turned, it I'm dead. If my front is turned, it I'm gonna do a take a lot of damage and be staggered. It, a lot of stuff to be played in that 1v1. A lot of factors taken into account, I think, was performed, I'd say, perfectly from both players. Oh, yeah. You, know, you like, lose as a Monty, but, like, even then, you held I, out. I want to say that even even more so towards the Monty, yeah. like, just, uh, just just weaving around, like, every single Dodging, melee. ducking, dip, dipping, diving, <laughs> and dodging. 
<laughs> Honestly, it's working out. If you could dodge a C4, you, if you could dodge a C4, you could dodge a you could dodge a ball. <laughs> and, or you could dodge a nice Telix. You can dodge a bullet too. <laughs> you can dodge a, you can dodge quite a few bullets as Monty. Even um, though I think a bullet might be a little bit faster than C4, but <laughs> hey, you, you a never little know. Bit faster, more effective, you know. About as effective as swapping to your sidearm because it's faster than reloading. But you know, Firebirds still on this attack, not at match point quite yet, but if they win this, it's gonna be match point. But Mountaineers could come back. The Firebirds cannot afford to really lose even those odds. I mean, we're seeing that time and time again where it's like Firebirds at an advantage and then all of a sudden just like losing three players and mm -hmm. it's coming down to a 1v1. Now we do see the IQ being played by the Mountaineers running a Thermite Sledge, a Lion, IQ, and Sens. Now Sens, oh, Sens wait, is no that's longer a, in play. I, I forgot that about defense. Was a <laughs> that was a pretty cool play to watch, though. Two Firebirds attacking from two different angles. Mm -hmm. It's It was almost, it was like synchronized swimming. Just so <laughs> synchronized for both of the Firebirds. Synchronized it flying. It was like they, they you know, majestically, I don't know. It seemed like <laughs> yeah, that's maybe a bad analogy. I, I get it. I get it. Yeah, yeah. They I'm were synchronized. It. That's it. They were I synchronized. <laughs> How many times did I syn synchronize? Do you, to the viewers at home, am I getting Six. my point across? They are synchronized. Yeah. But Tuan reading that play as well, making sure to catch the lion off guard um, as they jump through the window. And it worked out. So now Firebirds five against Ooh. three. Tuan trying to get a, maybe a little bit of poke damage there from the vertical play. But really not moving away, you know, maybe, I don't know. I don't know. I honestly, this, it's working out. Dirksy though, getting a double kill there. Unfortunately, the refrag was not enough, but a double kill, you serve your purpose. You do a good job, you know. You can retire. <laughs> you can relax now. You've, you've done your job. The rest of your team should be able to take it over now. Um, but we'll see. We will see what the rest of the Firebirds are able to do. Now, we are seeing GC minimum. Once again, Mountaineers are on attack. So the Firebirds on the defense, they just kind of have to hold it here. 35, 30, about 35 seconds left on the clock here. And Teshi doing a decent amount of damage, but oh. wasn't enough. And we do see not able to get the shot down with the shotgun. I'm not quite sure um, what, what what went wrong there, but the rest of the Firebirds still holding their own. Yeah, and I mean, we, we got see, a big time oh, advantage. Hang on, this is going to be awesome. This jump, be awesome. jump, jump, jump. Oh, I see Lux with a double kill though, because Tuan. The jump was we're cool. Up. I'm like, oh my gosh, we're gonna see, we're gonna see Tuan do some <laughs> awesome things, and then it's like, oh no, you know, it's just, yeah, we're not gonna have the time. Um, we do see from from chat, Takumi stealing the ace though, Crazy World. Apparently, Teshi did steal the ace, so. Um, <laughs> Teshi, I'm sure Ice Helix is a little bit. Actually, no, knowing Ice Helix, I think it, you know, not not a shame. Because he, he doesn't need aces yeah, that, to secure the kill. The, the round, round's what matters. The you round's know? what matters. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the round's win. Speaking of that, we're on match point now. We are on match point for the Firebirds, and the Firebirds are on defense, and they do really well on defense. But mm -hmm. we have seen teams come back from a bigger def deficit, so. And we, at this and point, we have it is too. yours to lose. <laughs> yes, yes. At this point, the Firebirds shouldn't make any mistakes mm -hmm. because if they make any mistakes it's very embarrassing but this is the hardest round to secure exactly a they are on second floor which is a pretty difficult point to hold mm -hmm. and i gotta say the mountaineers i would not be surprised the mountaineers come came back because the way they've been playing they've been playing very oh, well and look at the look Looking at the operators at they what brought. they're doing we do see I the like mountaineers it. running an uh uh amaru uh <laughs> finca ash uh, IQ and Ace. So it looks like Speed's the name of the game. Three of those five start with an A. <laughs> Ace, IQ, Ash. Ash and Ace. Oh my gosh. I won't even Ash, Ace, Amaru. Yes. And then Finca with another A. And then IQ, <laughs> which is IQ is just two letters. So it's easy. Looking at the Firebirds, though, running a Cade, Valkyrie, Pulse, Mute, and Warden. They really like Warden tonight. <laughs> they really like Warden, which I hey, I mean, I it's, like it's working. It is working. It is working more than we've seen any other Oh, week, here we which go. Which is really weird. Now, Claude using the Amaru with the Finca Boost running in, but now the Firebirds know they're there. Will we see the early kill? Ooh. And that is exactly what we're going to see. Quisby, despite taking a ton of damage, was able to get the down. And the Finca can wasn't, threat. Yeah, the Finca oh, wait, can rest. never mind. Finca could res if no, Finca was dead. alive, but Finca's not alive. <laughs> now, we would also see one of the Mountaineers is able to get the revive, but the Firebirds are able to secure another kill. It is all oh, out wow. of question here. Oh, the wow. Firebirds are able to get the kill. 
And another. Oh, wow. And Xerxes giving a double kill there. One more. But we see Twat yes. giving it is. Xerxes getting a triple <laughs> kill there. Securing not only the round, not only the game, but the game, but the week. You know, securing the game number two and the match and the series. Overall, what a beautiful series of events oh, yeah. there. <laughs> a series of fortunate events there. And it worked out. What yeah, went right there? What what happened there? Oh, I say Firebirds just, just kept that defense up and just like, nope, we're not going to let you rush into the site. Is that you got to get through us. Oh, oh, oh my gosh. And that was amazing. <laughs> Ice Helix went 15-3 and three that match. Wow. Wow. <laughs> oh, my gosh. What a player. What a player indeed. Didn't get an ace, though, and I'm blaming Tashi. <laughs> but wow, what a series of events tonight. The Firebirds were a dominant force. Mountaineers, though, it came it came down to really close matches time and time again. So, you and, know, but what amazing players! What amazing like, players, it, yeah. Great gunfights and it, 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 it and just, just the play style, adaptability of everything. Like they had a lot of strategies going for them, and that was just so exciting to see. Yeah, and definitely. I can't. Hopefully, we get to see him again. <laughs> yeah, I am excited to see the Firebirds into these these coming playoffs. Next week is going to be a very, very, very tough match, though. Mm -hmm. Playing against an undefeated team, I'm I'm excited to see it though. I'm I'm hoping the Firebirds pull something off. We did lock in our postseason seats though, so if we do lose next week, it's not going to be any shame. But we are going to go to a quick break before our post game interview. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. After tonight's Rainbow Six Siege match, match, your Carthage Firebirds against the Western Colorado University Mountaineers. And what a match it was. Maps one and two going to the Firebirds. Map two especially. And I got to say that last round, what a play. But joining me in today's postgame interview was a player all night. Just all night getting, getting kill after kill, especially a 4K at that last round. What a play. But Xerxes... Thank you for joining me. What is going through your mind right now? Uh, I was just uh, really focused when my teammate gave me the call out on that they were in break room. So I just pushed up the stairs and I think they were just so focused on other things that it just was easy for me to get in there and get a couple kills. Yeah, I mean, it looked kind of easy. They just kept walking through the hole. Um, but, you know, they could have got they could have killed you there. Yeah, but I got to say, like looking at map one, a mm -hmm. little bit of a kind of a, it was a seven to four difference there. What? was going wrong those those rounds that we lost um honestly i think our like um communication was good and i think we did play together a little bit better but it's just some little things got like touched in the wrong way that it just like fell apart like i don't know how to explain it but sometimes we weren't watching a specific angle and that's exactly where they were and they just pushed through but um i would say that we attacked better today on chalet in the previous times that we've played that map, so I just thought that was a good thing to like mm -hmm. for us. And then you know, game number two, what really highlighted? What was do you think the winning condition almost? Like uh, what what did your team excel at? Basically, I do think that it's interesting that uh, for some reason that the two times we've played theme, um, it's been attacker sided, which is yeah. very interesting because theme is usually obviously defender sided. So it's just interesting that we stuck with it again though, and we did come up four two in the half. So that's good. So then we knew we were going to be good on our defense. 
and we just locked it down from there. Mm-hmm. Now, I got to say, going into next week, you know, oh. the team SHSU, undefeated. <sighs> yeah. But I personally believe if there is somebody that – upsets have happened. You know, For sure. looking at last season, last year, the Overwatch team beat came from – Bottom of the leaderboard beat the number one team, you know, uh-huh. undefeated team. They beat the fire. The Firebirds beat them. So it has happened. Upsets happen time sure. and time again. So like going in, what is your mindset and what do you think you guys have that you could beat SHSU with? Um, I think like confidence, honestly, like a lot of our like players on the team, like we just are really like confident and we just don't really care who we're facing. And I think it does. The record doesn't really phase us, mm-hmm. and as we did see um, St. John's last week, they didn't have the best of records, but they came and played, and mm-hmm. it showed us that record always isn't like like it doesn't matter as much. Mm-hmm. So it's just interesting that they are on top of the leaderboard, and I'm happy it's like the last week because like yeah. I, like it's just I don't know because like our, our seeds are already locked, but this will just show like um it it it'll just be interesting to see how they play knowing that they're in the top seed, and so mm-hmm. yeah. Um, well, I don't know. I think, it, I mean, like you said, both seeds are locked in. So, yeah. like, regardless of the outcome next week, nothing's really changing. This is going to be an interesting game, to say the least. It's, I think what's going to happen is you you almost want to guarantee you're going to see each other again. Uh, exactly. Assuming, That's the, both, yeah, uh, assuming exactly. you both win, you know, time and time again, you're going to see each other again. Exactly. So you're playing next week kind of just for intel. Exactly. You know, recon, making sure, hey, exactly, knowing what exactly. strategies they're going to do. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if you had somebody kind of with a notepad next week. Just like, what do they do? What, yeah. what strategies are they doing? Yeah, so, for sure. Uh, but I am super excited for that match. But that is all we have for tonight. Thank you so much for joining me. And thank you for having, you know, an overall, an overall great match to watch. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we will be back on Thursday night at 8 p.m. for some Overwatch. They're at the top. 7 p.m. Sorry, I was told at 7 p.m. <laughs> Um, and that is going to be another match, I believe, playing against the number one team, mm-hmm. um, the Overwatch. So it's going to be a battle, a battle of the in the next two weeks. Uh, but be- definitely tune in for that. It is a great time. I'll be here with Flair on the casting table. Um, but thank you so much for watching. Uh, be sure to follow us on all of our social medias at Carthage Esports on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, the whole nine yards. It's a great time. Thank you so much for tuning in and watching. Have a great night, and I hope to see you Thursday. Behind Weathen shoves that right over to the Lions half. Looks like this one's going in. Oh, are you kidding me? Don't ask. Oh, we're don't ask. Behind. We're gonna see the barrage. The barrage. Oh my gosh, Nico is just dominating right now. What a play! That's disgusting. Oh my gosh, that was disgusting.